But you was um you've been introduced to our podcast via your song Sweet Love. Mm-hmm. So it's actually nice to get you here in person. Mm. Thanks guys. So, you know. Thanks for playing it. Yeah, so it's it's on the playlist. Yeah, it's on the playlist. Thanks. We, Thanks. We, we love good music. Um so give the people a bit of an insight, a bit of a backstory to who you are, your influences and why oh you do gosh, music. This question. Yeah. <laughs> um so my name is Amia and I'm a singer songwriter from the southeast of London, Camberwell. Woo, woo, woo. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Camberwell stand yeah. up. Camberwell Mac D's had a few fights outside there. Yeah, this <laughs> an infamous ah. Mac D's. Yeah. Um and yeah, I'm just I've always like been writing and, and recording music. Yeah. Um and then like I was like always performing and stuff like that, but never really putting the music out. Okay. So I was just doing like, you know, the typical Shoreditch circuit, you know, loads of open mics and stuff. And then eventually I was just like, F it. Just got to put stuff out now. Just got to do it. Can't do covers forever. Listen, you can't be hiding anymore. So I just put it out um, and I just just carried on writing. Um, and then now I'm here like trying to release everything that I've had like backlogged now. Oh, so you're sitting on Yeah, I just material. had loads of like, loads of loads of music and I was just not putting it out. So yeah, that's a little summary. Yeah. What else did you ask me? My no, no, just influences. So, <laughs> no, no, it's cool. We're we, we, we going to talk. We, we vibe. Yeah, so what was your... What were your influences like? What made you want to get into singing? Hmm. Honestly, yeah. So you know, everyone, I always get jealous because you know people are like, oh, music was playing in my house, and then yeah. they're like, my dad was listening to like I don't know, someone incredible. Like, yeah. It wasn't really like that. My parents were not like heavy music listeners. <laughs> I'm, like, that, I'm that. Done. It's not my siblings. Not that she's yeah. talking about you guys. Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> it was like my sisters. My sisters like literally, I was influenced by R and B so heavily through them. Like whether it was Mary Jane, yeah. whether it was like the Isley Brothers to um, bloody Lauren Hill, Keisha Cole, and then my brother, like he listened to what a lot of rap, so that's why I love. But I fell in love with like battle rap through him, and then it was like house and garage, yeah. and then my uncle, it was just like Sunny Day, come on, like Wasil, yeah, it was all of that. Chief so, Commander, Ebony Obi, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, my, game, bro, <laughs> all of that, that's literally, the, that's like, my stuff. Um, and yeah, my siblings, they were just like. They were the typical, like, because there's a huge age gap between me and them. I'm the last of five. Last of five? Mm-hmm. Your parents are not playing no games. Oh, man. gosh. They, we saw the story that apparently my mom and dad told them to go to East Street, and that was the day. <laughs> so, yeah. No, they, every Sunday they sent us. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. They end up in, obviously, obviously, we're kids, innit? So we don't know the difference. We just know they mm. told us on Sunday. Oh, so they send you away so they, they can, send them for the sexy time? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. They'll send okay. them away. You yeah. lost gas. Oh, that's a good tactic, actually. And not enough yeah. money for the bus either, so they would have to walk we back. To <laughs> they need more time. <laughs> Man, I respect you. Salute, salute. Here I am. Yeah, they've been. <laughs> yeah, they've been. <laughs> they've been. <laughs> they've been, <laughs> they've been <laughs> they've oh like, oh the god. Yeah. I'm, I'm pregnant. Not, pregnant. Pregnant. <laughs> so forties. Yeah. Do I, res- do I respect it because they strategically sent you, Junior, one pound, <laughs> one pound. <laughs> Everyone got a pound. <laughs> <laughs> Figuratively speaking, isn't it? I hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same ways, yeah, yeah. you know. Do you know what? I didn't know when my parents did did all that. I don't know if they. I didn't want my mind to go tactic. there, bro. Like, no, mate. Bro. I remember one day I woke up here yeah, and I was looking for my mom. And honestly, I don't know what's wrong with us kids. I just go to her room and then. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> my mom and dad. Nothing was happening. They're just lying down. I won't say spooning, but you know your arms around them, mm. like. And I was, I was just like. Ah! Yeah. I just started crying. I was thinking, nah. so this is where you've been. I don't know. I just felt so uncomfortable. And I was just like, just started crying. I, I don't know, kids, I guess nobody wants to imagine their parents. I yeah. don't even know where my mind went, yeah. but literally just had their arms around each other. And I just was like, ah, but nah, when my when, when my when my youngest brother was um, born, or when my mum told me that she was expecting. That story's hilarious. Oh, I was gosh. like, when did they do this? <laughs> Remind the people, first. remind the people how old you were. Twenty years old. Oh yeah, so that's what happened to my siblings. And do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he's twenty years younger. Yeah, so I'm thinking that's the first thing that went into my mind. I was like, we lost two because my room <laughs> is right next to their room. So I'm uh, thinking, oh well, damn. When did this happen? Yeah. Well, shout mm. out to them, man. Maybe when I went out somewhere. Yeah. But yeah, shout out to them. They man. need life too, bro. Yeah, yeah man. man. Happy, happy Mother's Day, innit? Come on. Period. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. East Street, you know, that's what that. Yeah. So and you lot was living in what time all the time? Yeah, so they used to send them Peckham, Peckham, Peckham sorry, North Peckham. Peckham. I love Sam, you know. Like, make sure you get the facts correct. North Peckham, so I always forget because obviously, yeah. Are you lot a product of North Peckham as well? Yeah, yeah. Not me, okay. not me. Not that, not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm sure, you, I'm sure your sister got some stories, right? We, we can have a chat properly one day. We'll talk. We'll talk. Mm. Yeah. Like, my mum and dad there in North Peckham Estate as well, bro. They went through it, bro. Okay. Mm. They went through it. That was, that was a different era, bro. Totally different era. So you're saying influences, 
Um, yeah. House and Garage, Battle Rap, obviously, mm-hmm. all the sister, R&B. Yeah. Like, I literally, they used to, like, literally print lyrics and, like, make me sing it and make me repeat it over and over. Like, record punishment. me on the record. No, no, I was just, like, a performer. I always yeah. wondered, They were like, using when... me. Yeah. <laughs> I always wondered, like, when singers first knew that they could sing. Do you want to know my story? It was actually really interesting. Go on, talk to I us. was Because I was singing when I was five, but I was nine years old, went to my first singing lesson. I, went, oh, I hope that guy's doing well, you know. Anyway, <laughs> so we're all in the class, and then he tells everyone to sing the letter A. And like everyone was singing, and then it just came to me, and I was like, eh. And he was like, perfect. And I was the only one that got it right. And I was like, oh, shit, I can sing. Like, I That's can actually sing. That's yeah, everyone else got it wrong apart from me. And then they gave me the solo for Bugsy Malone as well. So that was Come like, on. Yeah. I was getting solos. Bugsy Malone. It's always a good sign if you get That's solos. Dope. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was the, um, the ass in the Midsummer Night's Dream. My mum was, oh. yeah. <laughs> They they never been to a, an assembly since. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I I often try to get into like a singer's mind about like their development. Yeah. Like learning how to flex mm-hmm. different, you know, vocal patterns and <laughs> like when do you start learning how to do those things and then cars in the car like yeah. with my sister. Ugh. Keisha Cole was blasting. That's I, I know every Keisha Cole rift. Like mm. I literally let, like used to just scream it, sing it, like trying to hit it. M- Mariah Carey, Emancipation of Mimi. Is it Emancipation of Mimi? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. One of the best albums ever, point blank period. And yeah, I, I literally I like, that, yeah. I was singing them songs top to era. bottom and just practicing like, and just singing in the shower, singing in the kitchen when I'm washing the plates. And obviously I went, I did singing lessons from nine to the age of 15. So okay. I was always performing mm. like in the, in theaters. So I had a lot of training time. And then I went through that teenage stage where it's like, oh, I don't like my voice. Mm. Like I want to be like the girls on Channel U. Like they sing so softly. But that's what I was saying to myself. Mm. Like, oh, they sound so sweet. But my voice was really husky and loud. I'm like, Mm-mm, I don't like this. Um, so then I started going to studio in college. Um, and the guy was just like, if you don't accept it now, I'm like, you'll never accept it. And I was like, you know what? You're right. And so I just recorded. Shout out to him, Yes, yeah, shout out to him. I think his name's Tando. Hello, Tando. <laughs> if you're watching Tando, <laughs> if you're hey. listening. Yeah. Hello, Tando. Hey. Yeah. Hope, hope you're well. Hey. No, but you know what I was thinking about this year? I was just like, there's so many people that are like, who come along in your life and you don't really realise until you look back, you're like, oh my gosh, you was an angel. Yeah. yeah. You were meant to like be a part of the journey. Yeah. So, Every yeah. music teacher that I came across, yeah, I always vibed with them. They were mad cool. Did they vibe with you? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> so making sure it was a two-way vibe. <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't just like, it wasn't just a one-way thing. You know those students that always like... That like... line of questioning was a bit uncalled for, <laughs> wasn't it? It was like you <laughs> said... put them on the spot. I like, I like this. Yeah, no, we usually yeah, vibe because yeah. like they, were, they weren't like the traditional type of teacher, oh, the straight. Good. They were usually the more cool, the cooler teachers. Mine yeah, was like... the, my art teacher. My actual my form tutor, right. Mr. Rick, shouts out to him. Um... He's probably my my like my favorite teacher overall. From he they actually taught me lessons, but it's like influence in school. Yeah, mm, um, and it kind of helps that he likes he, he likes black women as well. So you know. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, no, we we had one. My <laughs> form tutor in year ten and eleven, Mr. William Shouts to you. Yeah, proper disciplinarian, but he was mad cool. We like, and he was, yeah. you know, them older. Um, he's like the older Jamaican man, but oh, he would, okay. He was like a martial arts specialist. Ah, okay. So he had all his kids in line as well. Oh, right. Wow. Pattern. Discipline. Did and his it, kids go to the school as well? Nah, okay. they didn't. Oh, that's the he worst. was from he obviously I went to school in Harsden and he's mm. from I think he was from like Lewisham. Right. Or he lived in Lee or something like that. Some around there. So his kids um went elsewhere in it more local. But yeah. Then it turns out his niece was Sue Elise from Mystique. Oh, sick. So then, at some point, he got Mystique to come to the school, in it to try and tell us, oh yeah, you know, GCSEs, you should focus, you know, like your life depends on it, blah, blah, blah. It's about deciding (laughs) your future. And I'm like, (laughs) look what you're doing. (laughs) (laughs) But um, that was like when they were really Mystique, innit? Mm -hmm. Alicia couldn't be there, innit? Because she was in LA shooting a video with NERD at it's the time. Mad. That's, that's why crazy. she went there. But the man then weren't really listening oh, to, to Mystique video. telling us. We were just us, looking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we were just like, I, swear. I went to a boys' school, innit? So the first was mad. Yeah, the testosterone was <laughs> through the roof, bro. Our, <laughs> our school was crazy. We had, um, shout out to Dr. Diali. We, he was um, 
So similar, mm. like, so Mr. Rook's a white guy and he was super cool. Dr. Yali was like disciplinary and tough love. He was very hard on us, mm. but would have our back as well. But the times when he was tough on us, that's the only one to on you, remember, innit? And as luck would have it, I ended up going to a sixth form college and who was there? His son. So first, hey. first interaction, oh, like, bro, God. I'll be honest, you actually draped you because <laughs> what your dad did to us for five years. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, everyone says the same thing to me, but I mean, he ended up being really, really cool. Like, mm. so that's how I mean, he was a proper nice guy. Enough. But like, yeah, I just, I just found that like in the school, our black teachers were on us more, but it was a lot from a place of love. Like, yeah. well, we never like they, really had any black teachers. Yeah, we had a few. We had, um, so we had a math teacher, I forgot the guy's name, but Dr. Ali was like, if you ever went to St. Thomas Apostle, you would know him. I don't know what he's, if he's still there and what his experience is like now. Wait, with you the went kids. to St. Thomas Apostle? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but um, when we were there, that. yeah, he was uh, he was on it. And he was wham as well, so it weren't no games. Yeah, he was, yeah. We had, we had a, um, a teacher like that, a math teacher. He's, he's Ghanaian, but he was from the States. Okay. Like Texas. Oh. Okay. Like, so when he spoke, yeah, he spoke with conviction, yeah. Mm. And bruv, he was gripsing up students, bruv. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they always do that. It's always like, one. It didn't help them because to... our parents, like teachers, our parents even would be like, oh yeah, wherever you want to. They took a little, Dr. Ali was gripsing us up, bruv. Is that bruv. Donny's actually gripsing man up. Yeah. And I'm like, this ain't right. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, our police, uh, some of our, our head of years were all ex-police officers, so. Huh? <laughs> yeah. They were a different type of like. I remember I was on a school trip in France, and I um he sneezed, Mister Llewellyn. He sneezed, and I said, "Bless you." And he's like, "You're gonna need some blessing if you don't get in that room." I'm like, "That is what? so uncalled for." Like that's how they were. Yes. I'm gonna be honest. If I'm if I'm one of five, I'm sending my siblings. I'm gonna. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm the eldest in this, I've got to send me, bro. I'm yeah, telling you now that I'm a parent. Level. Yeah, I'm on smoke. Yeah. You like, think? Are you like that? Then would you like roll up to you? Are you gonna be the that parent? Yeah, like there's been Don't talk to there's my been, kid like that. Or there's just been like proceeds that I haven't been fond of, yeah. So mm. you know, you have to kind of let it be known that I'm I'm on stuff. Mm. Do you step in for your little brothers? Because of that big gap, do you step in for their like yeah. your mum and dad's not available and yeah. go to their parents evening? Yeah. yeah, my little yeah. brother had an issue at school um a couple months back. Patterned it. I had to <laughs> I pulled up. Love gang, oh, yeah. all black. <laughs> well, you know what's so funny, yeah? Were you prepared for if it doesn't go right? Because everybody thinks, yeah, I'm old, I'm bigger than these. What if you They're go there? Yeah? His uncle. What, yeah, what if you go there yeah, and one of these kids drapes you? What would you do? Because yeah, <laughs> you can't get beaten up like Cat Williams. What, what would you do? Oh my gosh, that was embarrassing. I don't want to incriminate myself. All right, cool. Oh, he was like, <laughs> <laughs> what they? <laughs> fight them kids. But, <laughs> but it's um, it's more so like to speak to. The teachers and try to understand the whole scope of it like of course, obviously of course, of course. with the fact that like i grew up here i went to school yeah. so i kind of un- understand the school system a understand bit, the area you know what i'm saying yeah. like and not far from, far removed from a lot of the stuff that goes on in it like of course, you know yeah. about little squabbles or mm. whatever that can whatever situation that can happen in it i've mm. seen yeah so you know you chat to the teachers just to ensure that they are taking the the full adequate steps to you know help and resolve the situation because I can deal with a situation hmm. but he's still gonna have to go to school every day. Of yeah. Does he have confidence in the teachers to to know that you know they're gonna do the right thing? In, yeah, that you, in, you don't need to work together because at the end of the day, but he's. The, your brother's at school he's probably spending more time in school than he's at home yeah, yeah. near enough innit so you don't need to help me and I need to help you so it's like extra pair of eyes yeah. and also yeah, if you're not doing your job I'm watching <clears> on you as well and me and my sisters we've all um, signed up to the school's newsletters love that so yeah, we get emails all the time so in newsletters sometimes they'll tell you if Donnie was late oh uh, okay oh wow yeah. why are you late mm-hmm. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying like so we're, we're, we're all on top of That's whatever, good, you know, what happens in, in, in the school system. I feel a lot, a lot more of us should be involved in like school governors and stuff. Like we should yeah. definitely be more hands-on. Yeah. And yeah. with my daughter's nursery, fam, I have to be hands-on, bro. Do you know how much I'm paying? <laughs> Crazy. Respect. <Yeah. laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry, I, I took you down this. this, <laughs> this, this, this I'm sorry, I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I need to know what she's eating as well. Like, yeah. you know, yes. all these things. No, for all your pain, yeah, yeah. No, listen, I need my five a day. I need it to be correct, innit? <laughs> I need, and I need to know if she's eating. Yeah. Because mm. kids, sometimes, bro, like, you know, that kid that doesn't eat, he just mm-hmm. sits in a in a cafeteria or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. And Donnie just doesn't eat, and then you go. They're home. following one of their friends, and like, because their friends not eating, they're not eating yet. So, yeah, 
is what it is now. School days are hilarious, but we took a little detour. Um, you know what we should do? We should give the people a reminder of um, a sweet love and get into the rest of our convo on that. Yeah, because we gotta hit them with that because I was um, Miles Vans was pulling up, was pulling up. I was blown away when I heard that. It just sounded very refreshing. I've not heard nothing like that in a little while in the U- in the UK. Um, mm, and I didn't even clock it was you at the time. I was telling you before we were recording that. Mm. Um, I didn't realize it was you, so I was just like I was pleasantly surprised. I was like, okay, mm. I want to hear more now, so I'm invested in it. So Thank you, you set the bar high, so. <laughs> You know. I mean, it was like, it wasn't even an intentional song, so. That's dope. It just happened. Yeah. It just came, yeah, so. All right, friends, pull that up. 30 hertz, straight up. Off the cuff worldwide, baby. Baby. So what, was that about anyone in particular then? No, I wish. Say his name. Say his <laughs> name. Say his name. <laughs> no. Let him know. No. <laughs> I feel like all these, all like, as, like part of RNA community, all these men that have like influenced all these amazing heartbreak songs. Yeah, we, I think we need a bit of publishing. Like we need some back page. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. What we inspired this yeah, yeah. phenomenal record. Yeah. No, you know what? Like with this song, honestly, I just wanted to... Um, it was for a competition. So I was like, I need to write a good R&B song. Mm. So I was just using my imagination. I was like, I just want it to be lovey-dovey and sweet. Mm. So yeah, that one. But the rest of this music coming, it's got some truth in it. So yeah. Okay. So we're going to learn some more about you. Through yeah. Music. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. Do you think like it's weird dating? Like because Donya might just research your music and try and incorporate like his moves with what you're saying in your songs. I think, you know, what people is like, if you if you date someone who songwrites, just already know you're going to be like amused at one point. Like, I'll be putting everyone's business <laughs> in my song. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be using everyone. Oh, that's uh-huh. what he said. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sure thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. She's, sitting, she's sitting there mentally going, so how did that make you feel? Oh my gosh. How did you know? Cause I, cause no, bec- honestly, because that's what I do. <laughs> I'm a podcaster. Everyone's all my muse, innit? All of my friends, all <laughs> of my friends like, on the phone and they're like, I'm like, so yeah, so you know when that happened, like I wrote a friend, like one of my friends, he's going to get, well, actually he's engaged now. Okay, um, And he was just, he was like really talking about his fiance, like I love her, like when I wake up and I was like, mm, keep going. <laughs> Is this what it feels okay, like? Okay, yeah. all right. And like I wrote such a good, that one will come out maybe like a year from now. But. I'm even like my man, Tay Diggs from, um, <laughs> best yeah. man. Mm, yeah. No, yeah, it's honestly no, that's but that <laughs> bit brazy. Yeah, yeah, he did a mad <laughs> thing, he went it? too far. Yeah, he went mad left. Yeah. <laughs> now conversation is the best, like for writing. Mm. It's the best to like just get the juices flowing and then just that. like it's like absorbing him. like a lot of things, information, mm-hmm. and just having a yeah. uh, an outlet for it. Yeah, because sometimes you don't always want to write like um, imaginary stuff, if you know what I mean. Mm. Yeah. Like you don't always want to write like metaphorical stuff you just want to say it how it is mm. and sometimes you just need to hear conversation because when you're a writer like you you sometimes make up conversation that's not natural mm. so yeah a lot of it is just like dialogue yeah but, some yeah. are like you know a lot of the great songs don't necessarily have to be all metaphors and stuff like Facts. if you're direct straight to the point mm-hmm. it sometimes it could resonate a lot more yeah, what's your, what's your, what are your favourite like direct songs that like Oh, gosh, there's loads. Um, I know I'm putting it on the spot. I'm trying to think. I was by myself time as well. I'm thinking of like, even, um, what's his name? What's that? Not Bobby Brown. What's that guy called? Bobby Valentino. Yeah. What's that one? Was it slow down. down? I just want to get to know you. Yeah, Come simple. On. Why are you walking I was a bit corny though, but don't turn around because that pretty round thing looks good to me. It's like, ew. That's the problem because you, you told her to mm, slow down. It's a lot of instructions, bro. Like, <laughs> 
<laughs> what are we doing here? Do you want this number or not? And bless me with your beauty. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah, that's real uncle vibes right there. And bless me with your beauty. But that's LA Lounge. Baby, just bless mm. me. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, be, just be blessing me. Uh, you sing it nice enough, like, you know, it, it will strip the uncleness away yeah. from it. Mm. You know, but like, even um, something like Whitney Houston, like, um, uh, we'll always love you, yeah? Yeah. Bruv, like, yeah. that's... Direct, straight, yeah. You yeah. know what it's about. Mm. Mm. You know, she's singing to someone as well. Mm. So it's like, it just, it just makes it more heartfelt. Like, a lot of people would, would have an occasion to sing that to. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What's my man? I just want to know. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, uh. That, yeah, that's, yeah, that's direct still. That nigga like, I hate every song, every guy, I hate a lot of, song. yeah, a lot of guys hated that song. Because he was in the, he was in the bathtub with jeans. <laughs> <laughs> it's just because it was a guy being vulnerable. Jeans. That was why they didn't like it. That is, uh, the type of vulnerability that I never need in my life. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, RNA community, not on it, no. Like what? Man hops in a bathtub, yeah. Fully dressed. Fully dressed. I mean, Usher was out there dancing in the rain. Yeah, we dancing in the rain is fine, yeah. like, I, I could be on walking his, in no, the rain. No, but he was it? actually like, he went on his knees. Like, yeah, he was playing like, around he in the puddle. Ray J was, was outside the Oh my gosh, that was, that was the best one ever. Cause he's like, he's like, I can't be without you, cause I'm sick. Like he yeah. was like, and then Usher did the itchy thing. Yeah, you know that yeah, itchy yeah, thing yeah, in Chris yeah. Brown's vision. Da. I love <laughs> man with that itchy dumb, like, like <laughs> man itchy like. And then Tyrese, you know Tyrese in. Um, like he used to really go for it, uh, but Tyrese. Uh, but the hot water was. Yeah, but was Tyrese hot water, was. But, he, I think know. Tyrese had a plan. He was like, eventually I'm gonna act. So let me just. Yeah, Tyrese put was on. a different breed. Yeah, Tyrese was With the really headphones on and proper like singing on the bus. Oh god, that song was beautiful. Though, would you be my how yeah. are you gonna act like that where you just, mm. just outside of the mansion just on his knees we need that begging back, we need begging r and yeah, back yeah Jodeci they had the best Black Street in boys. the desert yeah that was one of my favourite songs ever even boy, even boys to, you've been gone that's too <laughs> long come back hour. home a whole hour come yeah. back come back yeah. Mary J and for the fact you said it's an hour it's probably true because that done yeah mm. yeah sad nigga hours man bro you had niggas in the desert yeah. on their knees in, in the the leather yeah. mm-hmm <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we need that type of begging yeah, on direct. Back. Yeah, because it was, it's when you're begging, yeah, and you're singing and you like an R and B with a lot of soul in your voice. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna make it believable. It evokes a different type of emotion, isn't it? I mean, because that's what R and B is known for, isn't it? Like, yeah. they can't just say something simply. Yeah, it's just got all of that. It's super emotive. Yeah. Yeah. Very emotive, man. Yeah, it's coming back. It's slowly coming back. Yeah, you got any? Any that in the top? Yeah, listen, the next song I'm bringing out is called More Than Just Friends. More Than Just Friends? So, yeah. Are you, are you hearing this, sis? <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Yeah, right. she's got the, the Yeah, you've got the seal of approval. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good yeah, still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. More Than Just Friends. Okay, I can. More Than Just Friends. Make sure you As that. Friends is a concept, man, I'm telling you. Yeah. you got to stay there, man. As yeah. Friends is a concept. All right. <laughs> she's like, aha. Yeah. It's a very good It's a good Oh, mm. uh, because there's a lot of lockdown love, love right now. Yeah. So I want right. to speak to the RNA community. Do not be used and abused. What's RNA? Real nigger alliance. Yeah. Yes. Do oh not be used God. and abused during these tough times <laughs> because there's a lot of man doing conversation three, four times, hour and night face times. When lockdown when, is over, it's time to meet up. Now. Yeah, and then they say, "Oh, DLT day party. Your baby's just gone missing." So <laughs> just f- figure this thing out, innit? If we can't. Uh. Also works the other way, isn't it? Like, now I'm speaking to the RNA community first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it went from FaceTime calls to ignoring each other at DLT. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, we're not doing DLT any favors. Let's, let's use another brand. <laughs> yeah, it's been crazy. Yeah, yeah just don't be used and abused, is it? You see it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. For both both sexes, both genders. Yeah, is that more safe? Than, more that's than just, yeah, that's more than just yeah. friends. You lot just assume that the RNA, RNA community was just, just for the man then. Nah, it's women it. too, man. Yeah. You know. Um, we have the cufflinks as well. That's for the ladies. The, the pretty yeah. ladies got cufflinks. What yeah. does that mean? So it's like a hive, isn't it? Yeah. We have our, okay. we have our, you know, section. We we've separated them. RNA cufflinks. Yeah, and sometimes okay. they intermingle and they cross over. You know, mm. yeah. <laughs> get your man that can do both. You know, you get oh, yeah. My God. Yeah. So what's like the the type of frequency of releasing music um, for you personally? Oh God, R- recording is a pain. Let me not be negative. It's great. So, um, <laughs> no, yeah, for me, it really, honestly, like, what I'm learning is to, as I'm one of those calculated people. I'm very much, like, wearing all the hats at the moment. So, right, like, okay. managing myself, doing all these oh. things. Um, 
so I'm very like I'm super calculated I'm super like oh my gosh this is the day and then this is what's gonna happen and then this we need to film this then da 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 um, but one thing I'm learning now is to actually just kind of take my time and it's okay but, like when things are done it's fine for it to come out and then you can create your rollout because I think sometimes with plans um, you just become really rigid so it's just to put out music consistently mm. but also do it when it's at a point where you are happy and you're proud of it so it's like no point in me rushing like oh snap playing black girls has done so good like i need to come up with another single no nah, let me just kick back and just like when it's right let's off cook a little because even with sweet love like yeah we've not even seen a video for it yet exactly yeah, i feel like you know that's something that we're still waiting for yes yeah, and that will up. like increase the lifespan of the song as well one thousand you can still work that have you has that been played on radio have you had any yeah yeah it's yeah. been played and stuff yeah. and it's like it's still growing Don't. and that's the thing even though i'm tired of the song <laughs> yeah i'm tired because i've been hearing it i've been listening to it since what june i wrote in june or july or something like that last year okay but um i just like i i do a lot of research and i do a lot of study on like how does how does it work how does music work and you realise like you've heard it a million times but to someone else it's completely Completely. brand new so yeah we're just reinventing it have a new music video coming out um, and so hopefully a wider audience will get a chance to see it when is that video dropping? sorry man 22nd 22nd of March of March okay cool 22nd of March Sweet Love is dropping on your own YouTube channel? yes of course yeah no I was just about to say that it's nice to see that your name's right behind um, the the actual song you know like you having the rights to, to the song what song? Well, it says Amir Brave. What, I'm like, Sweet Love? Copyright. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Just like, <laughs> I'm like, what, what you'll happened? Usually see, you'll usually see like a label. Oh, like, what indie. It and, you know, so. I mean, it's hard, it's hard to get signed out here, you know. Yeah. yeah you got to Would fit, you, fit it, it, is that what you're aiming for, the signed route? No, I'm, I'm not aiming to be signed. Um, And I'm not anti-labels. I'm, I'm anti, like, exploitation of artists. That's right. what I'm anti- but um, I think whatever's right, really, like as an artist, you have to know like how you work and also the type of artist you are and also think about the type of career you want to have. Um, so that really dictates everything. But you need money. Yeah. <laughs> you need money. You need money and you what need What did that say? <laughs> yeah. In this life. Yeah. yeah. Music yeah. costs a lot of money. It costs a lot to record. It costs a lot to like market yourself. So eventually, hopefully, I just want to partner with the right types of people whether that's a distributor, whether that's a label, whether that's a management company, mm. the right people who can help me take my dreams from here to there. Yeah, I like that because I feel like yeah. we're in that space where there's a lot of um, indie, I'm independent, independent. And like, I think people are selling people dreams and stuff, mm. you mm-hmm. know, because mm. there's nothing wrong with partnering if the situation's right. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with being independent. But I feel like there are a lot of people, unfortunately, who are um, selling the indie thing when they're what I've seen an article coined as like a Mindy artist where they have <laughs> major backing they've had major backing but have been encouraged to present as independent 1, for a while and then you'll find when their big when their hit song drops or like the album comes suddenly it's got you see Atlantic but that person's been there for a long time yeah. mm-hmm. they just yeah. stayed silent because also yeah. they're on their end it's smart they're playing the game because yeah. we want stuff that we feel a bit more closely attached to yeah. it's not like the X Factor era where like someone goes on the show and they're a star from the yeah. gate we feel like okay cool we met Amia early she was assured it exactly. we know the story and we follow your journey so the we feel underdog, more attached in it, in it. Mm. whereas like that, there was that generation of, like all the boy bands yeah for, like you know they were just farming them out they had yeah. them in like a factory mm. and just shipping them out shipping yeah them out. I mean you know once you see um, you know the the history of boy bands and, and how successful they've been yeah um, you know especially like in the 90s early 2000s you know over in the states you had Backstreet Boys and then Sync one of yeah. the biggest um, boy bands there, there ever was and over here you had people like Westlife dominating blue. you know so yeah Blue as well so yeah. true yeah you know it, it makes sense um, mm. in a way but uh, you know being indie it, it's the reason why I asked you about the frequency of you know yeah. releasing stuff because there's always going to be people that follow you they're going to be like mm. okay so when's the next one and yeah. when's the next one and it's then eventually this generation, when's bro. the EP <sighs> it's very microwave it's very, I understand it's very irritating <laughs> but it's, it's, it's it must be difficult for you guys to have mm. that pressure on your shoulders I mean there's nothing like ownership right yeah. there's nothing like having ownership or something so you never know if it one day takes off you have the share majority because in music like there's so many splits as it is but if you're not an artist that writes the song that's you and the songwriter and then if you're you get someone to produce it. Maybe someone came in the studio. Sometimes they like there's so Engineer, many things. Yeah. I've heard Before, things of people owning stuff if they if you record in their space. I'm hearing like loads yeah, some of people, stuff. That, I mean that's wild. Like who crazy? Yeah, and that's crazy. what I'm saying. So can you imagine like there's a lot of divide already. So 
people try to do it themselves as, as long as possible but as i said if you need money blank a thousand pound might not cut it it can, it can only go so long I mean yeah. if you're a rapper it's a bit easier because you could literally have a studio session two hours and finish the track mm. but if you're a singer like you need to layer it you need to put harmonies you need to do, it just takes a bit longer and it's also if you're a woman oh gosh really you know, get, your, you know, get your hair did find the cute <laughs> fit you know this costs money so I feel like it, it's difficult but ultimately I feel like it's worth a sacrifice like the grinding now not having everything together now it being slow now to have a majority share later on that's a, a big thing yeah so it's a sacrifice yeah either or have no, you found it's... working creatively throughout like the covid period i mean i still have a nine to five thankfully yeah um so it's like balancing that like being in the studio with my laptop <laughs> um <laughs> you know um and also like for me quarantine like the third lockdown was the one that was mashing me up like i'm like okay yes yeah, so, something ain't right like i need to get the hell out of here yeah. but before i was like oh yeah like, i'm getting my washing my hair like every single week like mm-hmm. you know just really walking like mm. by the river like just taking life in um and it just i wasn't like trying to um i saw it as well it gives us indie artists the time to like level the playing field because really everybody's more like interested in taking in everybody's art, not just the big, big artists who are already out there. Mm. People are like, oh, let me go and discover something new. But at the same time, it was that pressure again that comes like, oh, sugar, I need to write. I need to do this. I need to be in the studio. Um, so yeah, no, I just try to keep it cool and I just try to keep calm and I try not to let anything interfere with my creativeness. Mm. That's dope. Yeah, because that's what will honestly destroy it. And I always say to like other artists as well, if it's not fun and it starts becoming fun, like that's a big problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, and it seems like, you know, and what you said earlier about like people are starting to take in a lot of art, not just you mm. know, the big ones. I'm starting to notice that a lot more, um, you know, a lot of people want to find out loads of gems from because right now we've got the time mm-hmm. so we can sit at home we can research there's yeah. a lot more playlists at our disposal yeah. and we can create playlists as well all day yeah. so it's like for example us we have a following mm. all it takes is for people to just listen back to our playlist i mean you know we play the songs from it's, it's all the songs that we play at the intro and sometimes we'll add a few of what I may be listening to, what Foles may be listening to, but like mm. your, this it's another audience that yeah. I'm directing to your mm-hmm. music because it's on a playlist because we have something yeah. and you know, it, it's, that's, that's how a lot of indie artists are getting a lot more exposure nowadays, yeah. especially now because we can't, you can't go in a live circuit yeah, and, yeah. and perform. And the thing is, we're, we're, in, we're, in, we're in the house, just, if you rate someone and, and what they do, just share their stuff. Yeah. I mean, that, that's that's oh just the gosh. easiest, because like, obviously yes. word of mouth plays a part, but if you're not outside, word of mouth now is the internet. Yeah. You know, so. And there's like a thing about like, uh, some people wear it like a badge of honor, being the first to discover There's nothing this like new it, artist. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I've got a bit about, a little bit of that about me as well. Like, mm. there's a bit of, I enjoy the streaming area that we're in now and that, but the early phase into I miss like the mixtape era. Mm. I miss when I was finding artists early on SoundCloud and stuff. Like oh, yeah. SoundCloud was great. That was a lot, a lot of the artists we SoundCloud love now, they, they they bust from SoundCloud, didn't it? Mm. You know, so like I remember when I first st- um, was listening to Pine Next Door on SoundCloud. Like, yeah. You know, so. Uh, Frank Ocean needs to put his um, Nostalgia Ultra on all DSPs. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm begging. We've got Jenny Aikos on, on, on there now. So Sailing, Sailing Souls. Souls is on yeah. there. Which it's um, a different time. Yeah. yeah, people started making music at home then. Like that yeah. trap, that trap soul era, R and B era was like home studio music, smoking weed. Mm. Yeah, that type of sound. In the darkness. In the darkness. I was really part of, that. Were you part of that. I bear demo is like that. Like <laughs> I'm like I had like something like quote, the good quote. Era. <laughs> I was just talking yeah, all this yeah, stuff. Tumblr, 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 Tumblr era. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Hella hashtag under your your Instagram pic. Good there, music, so. man. Good it was. Music. Yeah. Good music. good music. Whilst we're on good music, we've got to we've got to talk about the the, the elephant in the room, Peng Black Girls. Not an elephant, a good <laughs> good thing. <laughs> yeah. But if, if we left today, we've not touched on that in any capacity. Yeah, they're gonna have me and Vance's head on a on a, on a stick. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So yeah. Sure. we do have to Absolutely. talk about that. So if um if people aren't aware of you, yeah. outside of obviously being on here and Sweet Love, it would be I hope for Peng Black Girls. Um, yeah, which which hit we hit us like all like a tornado, a good one because. I was like, yo, this is this is vibes. Like this is London. This is mm. especially what we're talking about earlier about um 
R and B sounds and stuff like just from like the video imagery wise, like mm. the bomber jackets, a certain drip that like London girls wear, hair out, braids, just like I like I love the aesthetic and the music was banging and then we get to the living room scene and all the aunties are in a tire yeah. and that like it was so dope, dope in it. So um can we play it? Yeah go on, you can play some of it. Thick lips got hips, some of us don't Big nose contours, some of us won't Never wanna put us in the media, bro Wanna fat booty like Kardashians Wanna fat booty that my auntie got a yoke Wheel up the blood clot, tell her reload it I've got the camera, my girls are posing I need some backup, then my ones are rolling Grown women ting, so I'm never at risk Mind my own business, I'm never in mess Who am I, I ain't they Get a slice of the cake Want a house with a view and a new pair of shoes Keep it real from the jump, Gucci gang Little pump, little vibe, little bass, little kick Little snare, little lies, big truths Do you, they don't care you, they don't care, get your ass out the box and build up from there I don't have a gang with me, but I still walk with a gangster lean I rock Nikes cause we think they're clean MJ leather jacket beat it, Billie Jean MJ leather jacket cause I think I'm bad That's cool, I like it The growth, the lie, the pain, the fight We love, we fight, we hurt, we cry He paid the price, you'll be alright Yeah, that's that. Yeah. Vibey, 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 vibey. Yeah, I, I love that you sound amazing on there. Thanks. <laughs> mm. I sound fantabulous. The video was cool as well. Yeah, no, I, I, I like the video. The video. Like, how, how hard is it convincing uh, the mums and the aunties? Easy to... peasy for my mum. Yeah, I swear that they're yeah. already. I was like, mum, do you want to be in the music? Yeah. Yeah, so What's yeah. What's we doing? <laughs> yeah, she came, she came over, slept, slept over at mine the night before. Dope. And then, you know, my makeup artist shout out to Rochelle, came over, was getting them ready, and I was just like, gosh. And then uh, one thing I'll never ever forget is my mom, like, while we're filming during one of the cuts, she was just like, I'm so proud of you. And I was just like, oh, girl, I love you. Like, I love you. Don't make, me, don't make me cry. Honestly, don't mess no, up my makeup. I was so, like, I was just like, I think. That's when I was like, oh my gosh, maybe I'm actually an artist. Like, this mm. is real now. Yeah. It's happening. And I think for her seeing it, it was like, oh, this is real. Mm. Yeah, so she was proud. No, it was really proud. Did you do like a, a big premiere at the house when it first no, came out? No, was in quarantine. Come over. No, you know. Oh, yeah, it was I want to see, you know what's so weird? Like, I think people were going up to my mom in, in Campbell like, oh, auntie, I saw you on YouTube and stuff like that. Mm. And like, obviously the grandkids were like, yeah. and even my like nephews who are like, one, well, they're two now, the twins, they're like, grandma. Like grandma, so like, grandma, and auntie put auntie song on. Like so. <laughs> what was that first Sunday? Oh, well, because they might. Well, I don't know if church is to open them. Like that nah, first I Sunday. Know, fam, like, I don't even know people Corona's from my church. Corona's ruined mad moments. I know. Because that's my mum. Like so, when when Biff had um, the advert for Adidas, mm. and she had the billboard in Bond Street, bro, mm. and they took my niece there as well. My mum yeah. gasped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. So it, that, that's my doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. I think you know even the magnitude of the song. I don't think I really like realized it yet because yeah. we haven't been outside i've not realized like oh actually it was a really good song that popped up yeah. in the uk yeah like it didn't really register register it's nothing else. Yeah. i haven't heard anything in a long time that sounds like that with that mm. type of messaging and also a good song as well oh I mean, yeah yeah we haven't yeah. had rappers like i mean we have great rappers but any's like a breath of fresh air mm. definitely so i feel like she sounds london yeah yeah, yeah. so as soon How as she, she came just tackled in, the song as well yeah. like, I, was just like, yeah, I like i like the kardashian it. reference you know mm. letting her know yeah. like you know that's not that's not the standard of beauty. Remember the Rick Ross line: "Mona Lisa just a bitch to me." Yeah, yeah she's yeah. a bitch, bro. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> respectfully, oh my respectfully, Mona Lisa with me ain't nothing but a bitch. Or disrespectfully, <laughs> that's not the standard of beauty. When he first yeah, came, yeah, people yeah. just like, oh, they thought Come Ross on. was just talking, but I like when he broke yeah. it. I was like, no, it's yeah. talking about standards mm, of beauty. That yeah. isn't yeah. the standard of beauty to me, in it. Yeah, you know, been sold a dream, in it. So, um, yeah, yeah, and a really good song, "Breath of Fresh Air." I love the video, love the aesthetic. Um, Mm-hmm. And we enjoyed it. I don't know how long it was after it being out, then we got the <laughs> the uh, the remix. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Yeah. When Smith I first one. heard the original, yeah. yeah, is around the same time I heard the remix. Ah, okay. I so, like, yeah. when I went to search for it, two versions popped up ah, in it the original mm-hmm. and the remix. Yeah, but obviously, I'm gonna listen to the original first, yeah, and not just because you're here, <laughs> I prefer the the original. And so that's why we played it. So when there was the option to play it, when it came, when 
when we played it, mm-hmm. I played the original yeah. um, instead of the instead of the remix. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> it was a lot. Not discrediting the remix. But, no. Yeah. You know. I think the remix was good. Like I mean, the first time I heard the remix, I was like, oh, that shit slaps. Like I was just <laughs> like, I ain't even gonna lie to you. Georgia went in because yeah. it's my type of mood. Like I really, I'm, I'm a like a moody type of artist. Mm. So when I heard like what they did, I thought, oh, this was nice. Yeah. Um. But yeah. But yeah, that came through like another hurricane as well. It was just. If, I know everyone met at a different points. Some people might have met it via the YouTube, but a lot of people unfortunately met the clip of just Georgia yeah. via the microblogs and Instagram, via Twitter. And plus it was on Colours. Yeah. Was yeah. it on Colours? Yeah. I think, yeah, I think via TikTok as well. Yeah, so TikTok what then happened yeah. was mm. it was a mash of people that had heard the original mm-hmm. and some that hadn't. Mm. And then it was the whole conversation around colorism and, you know, yeah. mm. erasure of dark-skinned black women. And then it... It went from there to Clubhouse, a whole lot of different places. Oh, especially when they found out the title of the song. Oh my gosh, Pain Black Girls. Yeah. What's then, going on here? Yeah. How did you feel at the time when all that happened in it? I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> Which really time? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was saying still going on. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. I mean, do you know what? <sighs> I can feel sis looking at me from the back of my head. You know what it is? I always prepare myself for this answer. Because... Nah, you got to let the chopper sing. We yeah. need to hear it. No, do you know raw. why? Because it's always tricky when, um, number one, you're new mm-hmm. um, and you're just starting out. Big so facts. it's like you, people kind of are always a bit more like harsher on you. Yeah. And also, also when you're like, when you're like on the original, people always like try to come with the whole, oh, I'm just a bit of black girl type of vibe. So I'm always like really like treading gently because it's just like, sometimes it's like you just don't want to come across any sort of way but i think for me honestly um i was excited about the song i never anticipated that the song was going to do that i was just like mm. oh just doing this song fun blah blah yeah. oh we're gonna do a video okay cool yeah i didn't think it was gonna be like received like that until i saw like the comments right of people saying like they cried like they saw themselves mm. um and then of course like i already was kind of a bit upset that i wasn't going to be on the remix because like i yeah. mean any artist would especially if the chorus was still going to be on there it's like oh yeah. man like, you can still, I can still hear y'all my voice kept on the there. chorus y'all yeah. still kept but i mean it's still good we've got publishing and stuff but it's like you were like damn y'all still kept the chorus you gotta sing a chorus but fine mm. um and then um is it is it the hook yeah yeah the hook that you wrote yeah yeah so okay. it was just like i think from an artist standpoint first and foremost it was like why can't we just have the feature on that part? But it's like, okay, you get over that. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't even mad about colours at all, honestly. I think what upset me was more um, black women were upset and a lot of women felt, oh my gosh, I s- saw myself when I saw Annie and Emiya and now I don't see myself. Like, you know how we kind of, when we watch things, we kind of live vicariously or vicariously, whatever, through people. Mm-hmm. So Big I facts. feel like when they saw that video, they saw London, they saw themselves. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, finally. And like, just real people yeah. and then so when it was on an even bigger platform it was like well hold on where's that person that i felt like reminds me of me or reminds me of my sister or reminds me of my niece right so that upset me that people were really upset like people and no one they weren't scared to tell me either like they were in my dms like crazy like oh, that bitch yeah. they were like i'm so angry like really? how do you feel about this i'm so mad right did that now. at any point like make you feel a way towards um any I won't say feel away. I think we had a really, really good, healthy conversation and just just discussed it. Mm. And I think sometimes it's, it's hard to talk about things where it's like, this is such a moment, like her yeah. breakthrough moment. And then here comes the controversy. Yeah. And it's like not in her favor. Yeah. So, but we had a really healthy conversation about like, what does this mean and why do people feel like this and what's our responsibility as artists and what can we do to make sure things like this don't really happen yeah because sometimes when you're just doing your art you're just putting it out there you're not really thinking further down the line or what that really means or what like seeing for some people seeing georgia and hearing georgia say those things what that meant for yeah. some women they're like go on like yes mm-hmm. our ally go on and for others it's like where's amia yeah yeah where is it me? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like sometimes like in music, we just don't think about those things. Yeah. But let me not even just say like, let's be truthful. We just don't think about black women, period. We right. just don't think about that. We right. just, we're like, oh, we're doing something for to push this forward. And it's crazy. Like it, it, it could affect relations when you have so many opinions like being mm-hmm. flown at you everywhere that you go. You know, like you were saying, you were getting a load of DMs yeah. and stuff like that. So it's like, rah. And it could stifle like creativity like yeah at a point because you know it leaves you in a disgruntled place they're clipping her wings she's just starting i was very i remember speaking to sis at the time like i was upset 
at the situation because I didn't even like the fact that she was on Clubhouse. Yeah. And people would come to the stage. Mind your fucking business, bro. Mm. Yeah, you don't I mean, care. I yeah. mean, well, I would, with Clubhouse, it's like an interest, interesting space, isn't it? Like, you know, already everyone's entitled to their opinion. Of course, yeah. I think what the only thing that pissed me off the most about Clubhouse was just like, when I am talking, it's like, now you want to like, like, oh, well, we know everybody that's involved in this. So what you're saying clearly isn't like, but now nah, it's just music. Like, how dare you? You ain't even part of it. Like, you yeah, ain't me. You weren't yeah. there. Like, yeah. you don't need to be saying these things. And I feel like I learned such a huge lesson. Like, it's not actually about me or any or Georgia, actually, for the people who were being out, not the women who first started that conversation, because I feel like, honestly, the actual initial conversation of like erasure, erasure yeah. was important, valid and needed. Yeah. But, the others that like were like no nah, like why are they trying to take shine from the song it wasn't about that mm. it actually wasn't about that it was just like this was a huge moment for like, for black women who for a lot of women have never heard that they are paying do you know yeah, what i mean like yeah. for a lot of women to be called that and to see it, and it especially like, it, yeah. ha- it being on social on twitter especially because yeah we've had over the last couple of years a lot of um prominent accounts old tweets being pulled up of black being colorist mm-hmm. a whole host of disgusting things so it, the people having that conversation on a lot of those people having this conversation yeah. were victims of that and have been exactly. on social media for a long time so yeah. it's so to now say like they heart. were trying to like you know destroy the song or it wasn't that it was yeah. like I saw myself and then I didn't yeah. Yeah. and like why is that and some I remember back then when things like this were happening there wasn't a platform to speak on and the thing is is that like all the people that are saying stuff like that mm-hmm. it's like yeah, but the song still exists. Do you know mm. what I'm saying? That was my that when, was my issue when, the when time. it was like, oh yeah, they're they're trying to ruin the song. The still the song still exists. Exactly. You're there complaining. Are you streaming it? Are you listening to it? Yeah, or but are you just complaining? But then my thing with that, it's not complaining though. It's not. Complaining. There were some though, because you know, you work in extremes. I know, and I know why you, I know why you jump at what Van says. Yeah, yeah. And it's not coming from a malicious place. But I'll be honest, there were some that it was just complaining. I felt people. There were people that were talking for the sake of talking. I didn't. Mm. I, you can never really judge tone when you're reading. If yeah. I'm sitting with you, having interactions different, but. My gut was like, I don't feel like you genuinely care about this topic. You're just adding to the commentary that's on right now. We do yeah. it online mm. a lot, but yeah. a that, conversation yeah, of this that's, magnitude. That's the part that was pinpointing. Saying, a conversation of this magnitude. Yeah, yeah. Mm. What you're doing is good, but go and do that because that song is still there mm-hmm. and you're helping both. Like, and just the, the ring is doing well, it's helping the original. Go and listen to that as well and help my, help this person. I think it's yeah. sick. Elevate and a song them. like that deserves lasting power. It do you does. know what I'm saying? Like, it's got a strong message. Nowadays, people just like, they'll listen to um, songs one week mm. and then mm-hmm. the next week is forgotten about. Yeah. We want songs of that magnitude yeah. to mm. have lasting power. And I, that's what it was. I didn't want what was happening to, to stand all over no, your but song that's and what, then people stop listening to the original. I don't, think it, that, I don't yeah. think, I think it was actually the opposite. I think if people never said those things, it would have, like the little mini clips that was all over social media, people would only remember that, the that's fair, that's fair. So I yeah. do think like that conversation, what it's just important. that obviously sometimes online you can't really have like real healthy topics yeah. Yeah. because there are a lot of unhealthy humans. So <laughs> no facts. So facts, I yeah. just feel like the actual origin of actually, hey, we're a bit confused because What's we felt like, here? yeah, we really felt like this song was for those who are marginalized. Yeah. And now we've seen someone who gets all the shine often yeah this doesn't connect with me. Yeah. And I think where it went left was like, you know, people excessively, you know, dragging Georgia into the mud. I mean, all of that, it, it goes to the circus. She's become the like, face of colorism online fairly yeah. or unfairly. Yeah. But it's fair, like this arc, so you're, you're the person directly affected. Mm. So the that was the sticking point. The initial reason we started talking was erasure. Mm. From the person that was involved, did you feel erased at the time? I mean, no, not the first instance. I never thought, because before I even knew it was her on the remix, I was just more like, from an artist perspective, sugar, this remix is gonna overshadow. Before I ever heard the remix, just okay. when I was told, the first, I was like, mm. "This is gonna overshadow the um the original." Because I've just never heard of like remix coming out so quickly yeah. after, like it was just oh, so, so you, fast. You didn't find that when we found it, so you knew ahead of time that yeah. So there but was a remix just before happening. before the music video, so I was just like, "Oh my gosh!" Like this is gonna overshadow the okay. original. So like, at this point, had the remix already been recorded? I think so, but I never heard it. Right, so I right, don't know. Right, right. So that I didn't know who the artist was. I was mm. just like, oh my gosh, this is just going to be bigger. Yeah. We're not even going to have a chance to do this thing. So I was like, oh man, type vibe. And like, oh, I'm not going to be on it. Oh, sugar. Like, yeah, that's crazy. Especially like with the hook that you gave. Yeah. Well, you know, like, and you, you wrote. Was there any conversation as to why you weren't 
kept on for a remix? I never asked, you know, I was just more like, I just accept, when I was told, I just accepted it. Yeah. And I was just like, just call my friend like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be, they're going to do a remix. And I'm like, someone else is going to sing the hook. And then um, when I found out who it was, and I was like, oh yeah, it's definitely going to be big. Like yeah. this remix is huge. Like mm. that's a, like, she's one of the biggest artists in the UK. Yeah. Big so to be, imagine having that as one of your first features. That, that's so monumental like that's a huge achievement yeah. so I was like oh my gosh it's gonna be like huge massive 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 so I really had time to do that but not at not one point was I thinking they're doing it because she's mixed race okay. or she's beautiful or they're trying to get because obviously Annie's a black dark skin girl Yeah. but I think when it came out and it came out on Carla and I think Shade Barra it wasn't good at useless printing they put like just her picture and, okay yeah yeah you know, and like, like just, I said with a lot of people the TikTok yeah, the, one on, the one on Twitter that's what kind we, of we, we see just Georgia standing there in the lavender you know yeah so. and she looked great she, she looked is great she is right Shade Barra I say Shade <laughs> you're such an uncle Shade Barra yeah. <laughs> yeah like I, I, yeah that's yeah. that, see what you said. They see, know what they do. See what you're saying there. Mm. That's why I get upset with and leans into what you talk about complaining. Where it's like people are using this for agendas, and there's real people that are involved directly affected. That's mm. why I get upset because yes, there are people that definitely see this and feel a raise, but platforms like that, they know you know people just do. They put um, a wild video or a photo and just put thoughts. Yeah, you're, but, you're feeding it to the wolves. You know what's going to happen. But that's the thing, though. The only way, the only thing I disagree on that was. I'm that, that's the thing you see things with like colorism like it's like like gas isn't it you can't see it do you know what okay, I mean yeah, yeah. it's there it's affecting us but we can't see it yeah. so sometimes even when it's it's happening you're not really deep in that oh this ain't really the best thing and I think honestly if the song wasn't about what, what it, it was, was about, about yeah. no one would care or we yeah. wouldn't make as much as of, of, of you know discuss it but I think because of that because of the video like I can understand why a, an 18 year old girl was like yes, I'm a, I'm a pink black girl, and then going on the a huge platform like Colors, like Colors is huge for breaking eyes. Yeah, and then not just see this other woman be like, yeah, yeah. oh, now it's going mainstream and mm-hmm. doing bigger than girl. YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so I at the same time I understand that. Yeah, some people are like they piggyback off conversations and and just like to have these heated discussions, but I do generally feel like it did come from a place of, oh my gosh, is this happening again? Are we repeating history with this? Yeah. Right. No, that I understand. So I for those people that's coming from a real place. I would never mm. feel like they was jumping the gun um, because even when we spoke about, I think we spoke about when Sebi was here, we may have spoken just before and after as well. Mm. I was like, and even in the 90s, maybe here, I think what I said at the time was that it would be, I would be really surprised and upset if nobody in and around any didn't foresee, maybe not this happening to the man that happened, but at least something happening at least where you have a song with what is what, um, called Pen Black Girls, the, the topic, or even the lyrics, and then you have a remix come out and you're not acutely aware of even how Georgia's positioned online. Because yeah. even prior to this, she's been unfortunately the face of colorism because there's um, an interview she has with Julia Dunuga and Julie Arks and talks to her about colorism as well. So like, this isn't a new thing with Georgia Smith. Yeah. It's been out there. Yeah. So that worries me if, because I, I, they'd have to come out and answer that question directly, if people around you didn't understand where this could have gone wrong, just from like an optics point of view. I get it for the artist. Like having George Smith is a big deal, so I can understand both sides. Because I remember her being on Clubhouse at the time, and like you, you feel upset because you want to defend. Like this is my moment, and it feels like everybody's just shitting all over like my big moment. But if you have a song called Pen Black Girls," you have the video, you have, you have the artwork. I know it does say light skin, dark skin, medium tones, but for me, when I hear Pen Black Girls," you're talking to dark skin black women. I could be wrong, but from the, from the visuals, nah, that's nah, that's that's what I get nah. from it, isn't it? Like, you know, so when you have socially aware, socially conscious music, world music, whatever, you've I feel like you've got to understand it comes with a lot. And this is where this pieces. is where this is where you may have a misstep. And I get it, like you're trying to get on. Yeah. I, but I think also sometimes it's like unintentionally you weren't trying to be this woke and um, represent all black women sometimes. And that's why I that's think unfair a lot of when you're a creative artist, that's what happens. When you're such a like especially at her, her skill level and you're hearing any and his music is very like transparent it's very naked if you know what I mean Yeah. so she isn't someone that's like going to be talking about like I've got a gun and I'm about to shoot it pow pow <laughs> she's really being <laughs> she's shouting pow, pow. Pow. you know what I mean so I feel like sometimes like like rightfully so we need like great teams around us and, and people and sometimes that one friend to be like are you sure about mm. about this and we have to think further yeah. and we do have to think further as well also obviously we we, we you know, we get onto white people like with Pepsi and the stuff that happened at H&M and all these yeah, types of, of things. But also as black people within ourselves, like, hey, what do we feel? Like, what is it? How is this going to be re- received? 
it's hard as artists because you just want to make your art and go. Yeah, I joked earlier when I moved, you know, after you played Lupita, what did I say about ZZ Mills is standing there with a the colour chart? Why am I saying that? Yeah. Because we've seen time and time again where the excuse may be while we didn't have there was no black girls available. There's no way they could have had that Lil Peter video with not a one dark skin girl inside yeah. of it. That would have been b- booky. Oh. Well, Lil Peter would have rang them up herself. And that would have been, yeah. it would have been like that a war. That would have been a, a disaster, <laughs> four yeah. par. That's PR disaster. And we would have said, you lot are dumb. How? I mean, same conversation we have now. Like, uh, how did that come out? How are you naming your song this? Yeah. Dark skin girl like Lil Peter is on a hook. Yeah. It's not one. Yeah. So, yeah. That's that's where I was like, when you, like, when you take away all the, the noise, I was just like, you know what? I get it, but let this be a learning curve. And like you said, yeah, she's an artist. Maybe it is also unfair. It's unfair on her if we're looking at her as like she's now the voice of all exactly. dark skinned black women yeah. in the UK. Yeah, she's exactly. the you know. Well, the... only res- whatever each person is responsible for themselves and what they they bring to the table and what they're gonna do and what they do with their art. Yeah. everyone has to take accountability for their own voice. And sometimes, unfortunately, you are gonna have to be told off at times or corrected. Like I'm learning. Like I'm still learning. Like I haven't. I don't know everything. I'm not always gonna be politically correct. But ultimately, like I still have a responsibility. I can't run away from that. I have a responsibility to make sure that. Well, personally for me, this is my responsibility. I give to myself that my nieces and nephews feel represented and they feel seen. Yeah. yeah. They feel like they can see themselves because there was a time that we weren't. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's it, really. It's simple as that. Yeah. Really. Yeah, we can learn a lot from this. So, where's the um the relationship now with any of you? Good. Like, you I mean, still communicating. Yeah, I mean, we're good. Like, I think it was we had a, as I said, like a healthy conversation, like a really good, healthy, you know, just discussion on this. Mm. And I feel like how healthy quinoa, healthy. Yeah, man. Green quinoa, juice, healthy. Really healthy. Kale. Yeah, yeah. and Spinach, I think yeah. yeah, broccoli. I'm I'm always groovy, and I'm. I feel like I'm just proud, really. Like, yeah. I'm proud to see where she's growing to. Like, You're still rooting for her? Of course, 1,000%. Yeah. Like, she's incredible. And I feel like she's one of the newest artists that we need in the UK. Like, yeah. I feel like we needed yeah. her level of she's skill. Fresh I've seen um, she's got yeah. a freestyle on the tube. Like, I just was like, it was mm-hmm. all new to me. I was like, yo, who's this? Yeah. You know? I want to see it work. So. Yeah, I want to see and more it of will. that. I mean, it, I mean, she's definitely like, without a shadow of a doubt like she would be one of the biggest artists not just in the UK period so like no man I'm excited and I'm just excited like I feel like Paying Black Girls was such a good springboard for both of us and I yeah as an indie in artist diff- yeah in different like, ways yeah. I mean who would have thought you'd be on the charts eh like <laughs> who would have thought that yeah, like that's yeah. like a dream like so many artists who are, even who are signed mm. don't, have not achieved that yet so no matter what like I just take from it like one a really good lesson to make sure that we are responsible we think about the art that we put out and we think about making sure we as black people are always seen and represented and then and yeah Two F the trolls, and F the, and F the, yeah. Anyway, yeah. and then, <laughs> and then three like to to take this and to continue onward. Yeah. 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 Now that you um you say that you you know you you're part of a song that's charted, did the song like bring a lot of new fans to to you? Yeah, I mean, of course, it brought people who were like. I mean, I've got your back regardless. Mm. Like, where are you? Yeah, hold me down. I love it. your hook. Hold me down on his next release. Yeah. Like, people yeah. like to me, I'm never going to listen to the remix. I'm never. <laughs> you know, you get all those people like, Tell super them, invested. Listen to the remix me. helps you as well. Yeah. <laughs> listen, I, I, when I never responded to any of those because I, I didn't want to get into any of mm. the drama. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, just it. people took a look like, Okay, who is this girl that everyone's talking about got left the world? Who is she then? And I was like, oh, who okay, she? she can who really sing. It was powerful when you got writing credits. Yeah. Just yeah. say that. Yeah. Do you know so, what I'm saying? So, yeah, it was good. And and in general, like, as it was, I feel like everything was God's timing because Sweet Love was already planned to come out. Okay. When it came out, yeah. I think it was like a week after Pink Black Girls, yeah. a week after the video. So, mm. everything kind of worked out. And I feel like, yeah, I couldn't have planned any of this. I liked how you handled it at the time. I mean, I can't, pre- oh, I can't pre- uh, act like I fully un- would understand and walk in your shoes, but just from the outside looking in, I like. I'm happy you didn't get drawn out too much. You know, I, I, I messaged sis. <laughs> I, messa- I messaged sis and I said, "Yo, get her off stage." Like, no, like, I, I was, I was right. I was right. Nah, nah, nah. Do you know why? Because like. You can't always control the narrative, innit? So sometimes you just gotta let people talk about that. Like I said it's not you see, it's easy for me to say that <laughs> because you you want to you, know get, you wanna that, jump yeah. in front of it. No, but you see that that's the one thing I will always stand behind. One thing about me is I'm I'm a like I'm, I wouldn't say I'm, I am calm. I would say I'm a very reasonable person and I enjoy peace and Until, I'm not like yeah. But one thing you're not gonna do. Yeah, they were drawing her 
Yeah. You ain't gonna talk okay. some shit. Um, and you're not gonna be rude. Like you're not gonna shade name. me. Like yeah, okay, yeah. someone call me a former feature and told me like, <laughs> like how dare you? Say hey, Vans, you me? have to fight. You can't call me a former feature. Yeah, that's crazy. Imagine someone like, calling well, you a former podder. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, yeah, that's so mad. when someone's insulting you, so because now I want to be an artist, I should just be getting punched up. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 we're not having I do that. Feel, try and dim your no. light, man. But at the end of the day, like, I can assume that all you really want to do is make music. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. You I know? feel because like the newer artists, you can't enjoy the time. I remember the time when um, Rihanna was on Twitter and used to go ham. Oh, yeah, she used to. And she, like, like, that era, I think, is gone for the people that are trying to be stars, where, like, likability is currency, in it? So there's just some things you can't. We spoke with SB um, on on our last episode, and she's speaking about um, being a female rapper and talking about something she doesn't like mm-hmm. from oversaturation from from women in rap. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she said she was getting cooked. Yeah, she's entitled mm-hmm. to her opinion. Yeah, and even if she articulates it, or just some people aren't going to agree with you. And there's that thing where it's like, I, me and Vance probably can enjoy social media. You maybe can't enjoy it as much because. Yeah. You've got to walk a fine line. It was because I, I even felt like the I'm, lens is on you now. Yeah, because you always you, I started thinking, oh, I just can't tweet anymore, or, or I can't post this and that. But then also in the same breath, it's like I'm a human being. Yeah. Like also, we need to. Why don't we chastise the trolls and the people who feel like they have to comment on every single thing that someone Fair. does yeah. or how someone does it? Like mm-hmm. you're just at home, just talking. I, yeah. l- I like a I like a good flogging. I like pe- seeing people get yeah. flogged from time to time. You know, I like a good clapback. So it's all, it's all very healthy, man. So it's, it's needed. But yeah, Pen Black Girls is still available to stream. Yes, go and stream what's, that. What's the, what's the best form right now that will get you paid the most? Should we, do we, should we, do we need to buy it off iTunes? Buy that. Buy it off <laughs> buy iTunes. Buy it, okay, cool. yes. Okay, cool. so buy, buy all the iTunes. music. Mm. Yes. Yeah. But support your artists by buying their music for sure. Yeah. Buying their merch. But buy, buy, buy. Because streaming is not... Yeah, I'll be buying. Play. Yeah, Vans is very... Um, our guy in the dropped something recently. Yes. What's his EP called again? He dropped it on Bandcamp. Um... Oh, Bandcamp's great. Yeah, that's, like there's different there's different ways to get around this whole streaming. Bandcamp thing is a is a very good platform. Mm, it's yeah. Very good for the, that helps the artists. From Swave with Love is is a, is the EP. Yeah. So um, yeah, we learn, I'm sure there's some bits on that we can add to the to the playlist. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's our guy, man. No, that's our guy. Big him up. Um, and happy belated birthday, George's birthday. Yeah. You. So, so Pisces out season, man. Come yeah, on. Okay, yeah, come on. Big Pisces, <laughs> that's the biggest Pisces right there, the biggest, <laughs> the biggest fish in the ocean right there. Come on, man, <laughs> Mr. Vans, you know. Hey.